now, time <clears throat> for the edit. It's pretty hot outside, so I'm pretty drenched. What I've basically done every time I want to go out and just get some content is pick a random spot and go explore every inch of it. Oh my gosh, I have so many <laughs> things in my pocket. Okay, and so what I've done, and this is just how I'm practicing to develop myself, and it's not so much trying to find these exotic locations to go out and, uh, and photograph or you just video, um, it's just every, it's just where I'm at. I lost my pop socket. So in keeping with, with what I've done, um, I came to this, this place that used to be uh, like some kind of industrial factory that turned it into an area with like some shopping centers and everything, but there's still areas that are still being developed and they make for some pretty cool subjects. So I've just gone around taking both photos and videos. I'm not the best at street photography, but obviously I'm trying to get better. And then along the same line, I'm also trying to develop I don't know if this is a thing, but street videography, kind of along the same concept of street photography, except I'm going around getting um, just quick clips of things going on outside in urban areas so that I can practice color grading them and just you know make, having fun with them and just practicing. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you in real time how I would actually edit a photo this is how easy it is for me to be able to just go out photograph some things and then start editing all right so we're gonna get we're gonna populate this into lightroom this is where i'm starting off with the raw image now i'm gonna i i have created my own presets just because i end up creating a very similar look over time and just a couple variants of it. And so I'll be releasing those soon for anybody who's interested. If you follow me on Instagram, I've just been kind of showcasing what I've been doing, but feel free to follow me there. This will probably pop up on Instagram as well. But this is how I would typically go about it. Um, if I'm not already selecting one of the presets here that I've already created, so Summer View 1, I've got 20, yeah, I've got 25 here. Um, I would typically start one of two ways. So the first way is select a preset that kind of gets me close to what I envision this photo ending up as. And I love deep greens and deep colors with, you know, desaturated blues. That's why a lot of my presets tend to look this way. So I'm going to start with this. Now, um, I want the greens to be a different shade. So I'm going to actually click this. And uh, so I'm going to start with this. Now, what I'll do is I'll go through and just make some ma some minor adjustments to my preset. So the exposure, I'll kind of move it up and down a little bit. And meanwhile, I'm also keeping an eye on the histogram on the top as well, just to make sure that it's not overblown as well, or that the image is not too blown out. And I like to really underexpose or bring the exposure down a little bit. So I'm gonna darken that a little bit. Um, contrast, no, I keep it over to the left. Less contrast is a little better for me right now. I think I like everything else. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and play with the colors a little bit. So the white balance, I've been learning, keep it as shot so that it doesn't mess with the other tones, but I'll definitely desaturate some things here. So I'm gonna bring, bring this down a little bit. Color grade, I think I like where these colors are at. So I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. Let me see, midtones. Yeah, I did like where the midtones were at. Um, and then highlights. Actually, I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. Yeah, right there. A little bit of a yellow tint to it. I like that. I like where it's come so far. All right, and then I'm going to unblend this just a little bit. Whenever you're not sure uh, how much a slider is really going to affect it, or even if you want that effect at all, what I typically do would just be to mo move it over to the extreme ends. See if you even like that effect. If not, you leave it alone. And then if you do, you just adjust to what your eye is more inclined to. So blending, we'll keep it at 85. All right, so now I'm done with the colors, um, with color grading. Now the individual colors, the thing I love about Lightroom is that it gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to different shades, hues, saturations. I hover around the green, the greens here. So I'm going to actually make these a little darker. Saturation, I'm gonna bring down just a little bit. And then the luminance, uh, I'll keep it down. I like that. Now the blues, let's 
mess with these blues a little bit. Not doing much. Let's move over to a darker one. Okay, so this one's gonna start changing the sky a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually make that just a little bit darker and then desaturate it a little bit. I like the way that looks. And to appreciate the, the adjustments that you've made thus far, you can always just hold the screen and it undoes everything that you've done there. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Actually, let me bring up the blue just a little bit. Mm, too green. Keep it right there. And then the vibrance, I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. So I'm happy with this image. Oh, one last thing on the effects here. I'm gonna mess with clarity a little bit. I'll bring that down. Texture. I don't like too much texture. I've learned that I like things smoothed out a little bit. Okay, cool. Any grain? Make this retro looking? Nah, keep it sharp. Cool, I like that. So that's pretty much it. That's gonna go live on Instagram in the next couple of days. So the other way too though, so that was using a preset. It jump starts a lot of things. Now, what if I don't wanna use a preset or I don't have presets to use? So let's go ahead and download an image. So this last one edited with a preset pretty quick, did it in a couple of minutes. But if I don't have a preset, how can I go about learning to see what colors I like? So the same idea applies when it comes to the slider. So when you open up a new photo and you don't have anything preset, I like to just move the sliders in extreme directions to see if it's something that I would like to add. Uh, and then once I've moved over from the light section on through color and then effects, um, I'll often go back to those tabs and then move those sliders over again to see if it changes because some effects look different when you've got, when you've messed with the colors and vice versa. Exposure looks a little different when you've made it a little warmer. So the, I, I just like to go a little bit back and forth. So in real time, this is what my process looks like. Um, I definitely don't like it overblown. In fact, I might even just bring it down a little bit. Now the contrast, and we're negative, it's not that much. I try and expose as these images as well as I can in camera so there's not a whole lot of maneuvering that I'm doing. Now for the contrast, um, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably put a little bit of contrast in there. There's a lot of dark going around the frame. Highlights, I don't wanna overblow it. So we'll keep it down here. Now there's a lot of blacks in here so I wanna, Trying to think if I want to really emphasize those. I'll keep it there. All right, so whites. Two things, uh, two things to note when you're editing. Obviously, edit in the highest brightness of your phone so that you can see all the details as it's coming up. Try and edit in a room that there's not a whole lot of sun coming in, shooting glare on your phone, or just messing with your view of the photo. And then the other thing too, and I cannot believe I didn't think about this before, um, pay attention to the screen protector you have. I don't have any screen protector on my phone right now, only because before, recently I was at an event where I was editing a photo, somebody looks over my shoulder and says, uh, that matted screen protector is messing with the way you're looking with the photos. I, it's something that I should have thought about from the beginning, and I don't know why I didn't. Um, all right, so shadows, happy with that. White, now the blacks. This one has the potential to be really moody, but I don't wanna make it look childish as well. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit. All right, now that I'm good with the way it exposed, I'm gonna look to see how it looked before. Okay, I just kind of darken things a little bit. Now we're gonna move into color. This is where things get really interesting for me. Uh, recently, something that I've just been doing is not really messing with the white balance. I'm gonna leave it as shot because if I end up liking this image a lot, I'll turn it into a preset. And the last thing I wanna do is sell a preset or give a preset to somebody where the white balance was just all over the roof. I want to, I want to sell or give these images to people that are gonna be shooting in similar conditions. And so if they're shooting in similar conditions, they're gonna be almost exposing in a way, uh, the, the same way. And so I don't wanna give them something that really skews their coloring off. So I'm gonna keep the white balance on, on as shot here at the top there. And I'm gonna move over to, see before I even go into saturation, what I'll typically do is just move into grading first. So this kind of look, let's see. And the same rule applies for me for the grading. So I'll just, 
I'll just hover my finger over this and just kind of see what makes sense. If it doesn't make sense at all, feel free to leave it at zero. So obviously this one, which route do I want to go for the shadows? Let's go for more, let's go for a cooler, a cooler look. Okay, so I'm gonna lean towards the blues on the shadows. So we'll, we can come back to that if we need to, but I like how the blacks have kind of turned like this grayish blue. Now we're gonna go into mid-tones, see what that affects. If you're not familiar with how these color, this color grading works, and really what each slider is affecting, this is a great way to learn to see because the mid-tones I can see by moving this around, it's not messing with the shadows and the dark spots as the previous one did. This one's more along the lines of like the middle of or the center of the frame in this photo. So I wanna contrast colors. I've got on the, uh, on the outside, I've got this dark look, but now on the kind of the mid-tone section, so the middle of this frame, I wanna contrast it with the opposite colors. So I'll bring in some yellow there. Cool. Now highlights, let's see, what's this gonna look like? Not blues, I'll probably lean towards yellow. Yeah, I like that, cool. All right, I'm gonna be done with color grading there. So now once that is done, I'm gonna go into the individual colors. Now there's three colors in particular, blues, yellows, and greens that I really wanna tamper with. Greens, for me, is really the, the decider factor. So I always try and nail down the greens as much as possible. I really like the deeper kind, the deeper greens, with a little bit of desaturation involved. But I want it to stand out, so I'm gonna, the yellow that is in the background, I'm going to go ahead and actually try and emphasize that a little bit. I like the way that looks. Just kind of add some layering. I want to add some depth to this photo. I like the way that looks already. Okay. Blues. I'm going to make that just a little darker, a little desaturated, kind of like metallic-y. Silver color there, perfect. And the greens, my side of the greens. Okay, I think I like that. Yeah, I like that. It's got a warmth to it in the background, but a coolness in the front, and that's contrasting. So now I'm gonna go back to the main color tab and I'm gonna play around with the saturation. I don't oversaturate things. In fact, I'm leaning more towards desaturating but I think I like the way I color graded them individually. So I'm gonna keep that there. I'm actually not gonna to touch this much because I'm happy with the colors. So I'll look back at what it looked like before. Yeah, definitely a lot of toner. Now, effects, texture. Uh, maybe just a tad bit of texture. I'm gonna leave clarity at zero and then dehaze. Maybe negative 15. I like that. And that's how I've done it. Now, um, if it was in an environment, if this was a typical shot in, in where I typically take photos that I ended up liking this photo and the way that I color graded it, I may save that as a preset. Thing is, this shot here, I don't really get that a whole lot. And so the last thing I wanna do is create a preset that I'll never use that takes no space or somehow makes it an editing uh, pack that I sell and <laughs> I just, it made no sense. It doesn't go with the theme of what how I typically edit. Uh, but if I wanted to make this into a preset, it's very simple. You just hit these three buttons or these three dots up on the top right, right there. And then I would go into create preset right over here towards the bottom. So the third up on the bottom. Then you select basically the group that you want it to go into and then you would title it here at the top and you save it but I'm not gonna do anything with it. I like this photo, I'll post that because it goes along with the theme. The thing is, it just doesn't do, it doesn't go along with what I typically shoot. I hope that helps. That's just some, that is one way that I find daily inspiration. When I feel like I'm just, I'm not getting anywhere, I'm not developing myself, I pick a spot that I go to and, it, and I purposely try and make it not as interesting. This area was a little slightly more interesting, but I try and pick a spot where um, I'll focus on a scene and I'll start there and I try and really dissect it. So if I see an alleyway, I'm gonna take a context photo. I'm gonna take a photo of that or a video 
and then I'll start nailing in on details that tell the story of what it would look like if I was walking down that alleyway or if I saw a really interesting building, what would it look like if I took a tour around it, take detailed shots, videos. And so for me, that has helped over time come up with new ideas, you get sparks, so you get sparks of creativity. And so I just really hope that that helps somebody. If it does, drop a comment, let me know how that did help. If you have other techniques that help you find inspiration, I need some of those because there are a lot of dry seasons where I just don't have any ideas and I'm just, I don't know, I feel like I'm not doing much. But I hope that helps. We'll see you guys in the next one.